Nice. Oh, and I leveled up. Sweet. Captain's cabin. Success. Another salon stewed gossip. Yeah, that's a, this is enough for me to feel not comfortable, but confident enough to keep exploring. At least one errant shot won't kill me. Probably. Okay, I know which one I want to go for. And I actually want to mention something. I want to develop Elizabeth's backstory a little bit. I was just looking at the steam and soot, and just to read it. You spent much of your time at the engine yards, watching locomotives being built, repaired, and decommissioned. They were iron, iron behemoths, their bones steel, their breath steam, their innards intricate as a pocket watch. How did you spend your time among them? I'm not going to go with this option because I've just thought, looking at this, that I don't think Elizabeth is someone who likes to get their hands dirty at all. I think they're a bit... They're a bit... Proper. Maybe a bit st stuck up? They grew up in a wealthy family, and they changed, and they became a revolutionary. But I don't think they like to get their hands dirty. I think they are more of a keep everything nice and clean kind of acad more academic type. But let's go with the blockade of New Winchester. Actually, no, no, sorry. Let's go with the bell tolls. You have foreseen your own death. It did not please you. Perhaps you saw it in a dream. Perhaps a medium read it on your palm or in your tea leaves. When death comes, where will he find you? In the cold skies, an early death and a cruel one. Sometimes you dream of hoarfrost gathering in your lungs. It is not the death you chose. You will elude it. Five veils, three mirrors. Okay, back to looking for Port Prosper. I think I'm just going to keep going this way. Probably try to go a little bit more north. Because I'm thinking it's maybe about here. I'm probably going to encounter that dreadnought again, but it was almost dead. A couple shots from afar might do it. Oh, I just realized we are quite low on supplies. I think it's still worth it to send out the Diffident Bat, though. Oh. What's that? Is that it? Something. It's angry. Oh yeah, that's it. It's smoking. Maybe I can raid it for supplies? Ooh. Oh, this is different. Check the navigation suite. If the Dreadnought kept secrets, they're here. You may gain an unlicensed chart. What's that? It's either that or unusual cargo, so let's do it. The suite is upholstered in a scarlet velvet and brass, like an opera box with artillery. Unused weaponry lines the walls, their shadows spilling over the empty glasses strewn about the comfortable chairs and tables. Among a stack of papers, mostly tracking suspected criminals along secret routes, is a ministry permit for discretionary activities. Ministry stamped permit? What can I do with that? So that's not in my cargo hold or anything like that, it's just a, a thing. Uh, intangible thing. Blank, save for its stamp. A smuggler would kill for these. Acquire these from Company House. The parsimonious, uh, parsimonious chairman, Sweet Jane, or the, or the Ministry of Public Decency. Okay. Yeah, so it just has the stamps. So you can write whatever it is you want. So like, hey, yeah, I'm totally authorized to bring all this, I don't know, red honey or something. I wonder if I can use it, though, or if I can just use it on other people. Ooh. 
Come on, bet. Come on. Where's Port Prosper? Oh, oh, there's Port Prosper. Wow, it is on the edge. Hey. Speaking of... What happens when you reach the edge? What's at the edge? Huh. A rumble of far-off refineries. Distant searchlights rake the sky. Oh, hey. Are they going to attack me on sight, by the way? The dreadnoughts? Port Prosper. Oh, finding a new place should also greatly lower my fear. Man, look at this place. Does look like a place of industry, huh? The Fulbright Factory. It's not a reference to the Fulbright Company. The video game company that made Gone Home. I think that's the name of it, or something similar to that. Yes, 44 Terror. I needed that. Okay, well, we got a bunch of things to do here. Um, yeah, let's just start. Crammed at the feet of a hulking crag, Port Prosper is a little London, divided into an affluent west end and an impecunious east. Queen's Cross is a busy station crowded with engines that have arrived through the nearby transit relay from Albion. Nearby? Oh, so around here we can get to a whole other region. I am not ready to go to another region yet. I told myself that in the future, if I see a word in this game that I don't understand what it means, I should look it up. So I just did that with... Impecunious. Impecunious, or impecunious, means having little or no money. Like, penniless, poor, impoverished. Okay. Right, um... First, let's deliver the fastidious inspector. Remember them? I've had them for a long time. She disembarks with her bag in hand and peers up at a clock tower that is being raised above the station. It is tangled with scaffolding and rings with the sound of hammers and the cries of workmen. Accept your payment. The inspector will depart. Be sure you've held any conversation with her that you wish to. You'll receive fuel and supplies in addition to a sum of money. Ensure you have six spaces in your hold before accepting. Hmm. I do have six spaces, but actually let me dump off some more because I want to complete this jumble of undistinguished souls thing. A butler receives the bottled souls at the servant's entrance to a grand townhouse. Most appreciated, and please accept a small additional sum as an indication of how highly we value your discretion. Alright, I'm back up to about how much money I had before I purchased the armor. Okay, so now I have tons of room. So, let's go ahead and drop them off. Thank you, Captain. Here's the balance of our agreement, and, as promised, a requisition order for fuel and supplies. She casts another glance at the incomplete clock tower. Given the apparent state of construction, I'd recommend you visit the worksite. There may be an opportunity there. And thank you for the pleasant conversation, Captain. The sky can be a lonely place. You enlivened it. I've included a small additional sum in your remuneration as a token of my gratitude. Three fuel, three supplies, 150 sovereigns. Okay. They plan to call it the Albert Clock in memory of the departed Prince Consort. But there's a way to go yet. The roof isn't finished and the clock neither ticks nor bongs. You can see the fastidious inspector up among the workings with a spanner and a can of oil showing the workmen how it's done. Oh, they need a gourd of coarser nectar and bronzewood. I have both of those in my bank. Um, ask the horse foreman what they need. Bronzewood, the foreman wheezes bluntly. One consignment. 
They sell it at Trader's Wood and Palmer and Plenty's, I hear. And a gourd of Corister Nectar, too. This bunch of work-shy ingrates need constant shouting at my voice has given up the ghost. Some nectar should have me bellowing again like a champion. Carillon's your best bet there, or Titania, the flower town. We'll pay, like. Huh, so it's giving me tutorial text. I think you were sort of meant to do this right at the very beginning of the game. And this was meant to be your introduction to everything? Well, I waited a fair bit on this one, huh? They don't have a bank here, right? That's only... Yeah, they don't. It's only at the, the main hub that you can access your bank. Its narrow streets huddle in the shadow of a great crag. Banners display the stony features of her renewed majesty. Wealthy West Enders strut by, exchanging polite greet polite <laughs> exchanging polite greetings in veiled gossip, while city East End workers file to the hour refining factories. Peeling posters promise fresh, wholesome lives in the reach to new arrivals. But most of the posters are years old. More newcomers arrive at Port Prosper than ever leave it. Hmm, fresh, wholesome lives. Is that supposed to be an advertisement to people coming from the Albion Relay? Are people sort of leaving that place? Something going on? War, famine, no work, something wrong? Let's get a port report. The factories continue to belch out smoke, while over the bridge, hopeful crowds gather outside the Admiral Nelson. Lovers can be seen strolling arm in arm along the promenade, at a respectable distance from their chaperones. There is a brief protest outside the Windward Company factory, swiftly quelled. The scones of the Nelson were as good as ever, though the piquancy of the jam was less than might be desired. Piquancy, that's another one of those words. Uh, piquancy means a pleasantly sharp and appetizing flavor. Yeah, spiciness, tang, tastiness. The quality of being pleasingly stimulating or exciting. So the jam was uninteresting, kind of flat, I guess. Oh, there's a parade going on. Hold on, what do they have for the bazaar? Oh, the bargain is the nostalgia crockery. I've already got some stored in my bank, and I don't know who wants that. You unlocked this with affiliation establishment. You have one in all. Hmm. So your affiliation gives you access to certain bargains. The recent death of a well-to-do widower has triggered an unseemly family squabble over the disposition of his estate. An indifferent solicitor has been charged with auctioning off various of the deceased's unwanted belongings in order to cover the death duty. Oh, that's cool. So you're buying old crockery because some rich person died from their just selling off the estate. Oh, that's a nice detail. You know, it's that's taking it from just generic crockery. It, even though once you buy it, it is generic crockery. It's the same as any other crockery you might get, but they're wrapping it in this really, this really cool story. The Emporium. Oh, so they export barrels of unseasoned hours. I need that? Yeah, two places need that. The Circus and the Nature Reserve. Excellent. I should bring as much of this back as I can, then. Because how many do I need? Five for that, four for that, so I need nine in total. I don't even think I can bring enough back and have enough other supplies to do anything. Well, let's explore. Explore Port Prosper a bit more before I decide on what I want to take anywhere. There's a lot to do. Uh, okay, so the clock tower, that's the thing we've already done, right? Yes, need to come back with some supplies. I can attend a parade. I don't know why that keeps popping up after I go to the clock tower. I guess we'll do it. Yeah, you go to the clock tower and then say perhaps not, and then it offers a... Wait, where did the parade go? Hmm? I don't understand. Uh, anyway, let's ask about the Albion Transit Relay. It lies in a cul-de-sac close to the Port Prosper dock. There, locomotives can secure passage to the far-off territories of Albion, where London lies. Ah, that's where London is. Inquire about passage to Albion. 
Another captain may have useful information about the relay. A garrulous captain is delighted to have an excuse to talk. I'm happy to help, comrade. Happy to help. They point down the docks. There you are. Keep going past the port. You can't miss it. If you've good eyes, you might even be able to see it from here. Passage ain't free, mind. You can travel first class if you have a ministry stamped permit. Or you can bring a couple of barrels of hours to travel second class. I do have a ministry stamped permit. Right? Isn't that this? Yeah, ministry stamped permit. Does first class do anything different? Maybe it reduces terror as you're going through because it's first class. <laughs> Free drinks. Let's, hmm. The parsimonious chairman's office. The offices of the Windward Company on Port Prosper are elegantly appointed, if antiquated. I wonder what they're going to think of me. I just killed two of their ships and I am absolutely their enemy. They might not realize it yet, though. Paintings of old London adorn the walls. The parsimonious chairman has work for ruthless captains. He sits behind his imported mahogany desk, a decanter of brandy at his left hand, and a series of neatly stacked reports at his right. A fire has been lit in the cavernous hearth. It is too warm. Let's listen to their offer. Promises an opportunity for profit. God, I don't like their face. He pours the brandy into two glasses, then produces a ruler to measure the amounts. <laughs> to business, he smiles, revealing the extensive damage to his teeth. I was a pugilist back in London. A young man's game. In case you're not aware, a pugilist, I think, is someone who fights barehanded. So, I guess their teeth got knocked out. He stands at the window, watching the starlight bathe the sloping streets of Prosper. This place exists because of constant work, from the politicians who planned it, to the pioneers who built it, to the soldiers who even today defend it from the Tackities. <laughs> I'm a Tackity. We have need of more such work. Bring me nameplates from Tackity engines. We keep lists. You'll be rewarded. Ah. They'll reward bounties. Well, I need the equivalent of this, but for the Tackities. Decline, you will do no such thing. The parsimonious chairman sighs as though used to disappointment. He allows you to finish your brandy before ringing a little bell. His secretary escorts you out. My door, the chairman says as you leave, is always open. I don't think it is always open. Once they realize just how much I dislike the Windward Company, I think they'll shut that door and probably attack me on sight. Oh, here's the parade which has just popped up again weirdly. It is apparently the Feast of the Red Saint. Gaudy banners fly over the painted rooftops of Port Prosper. The smog of the East End is hidden away by giant posters displaying dragons in varying degrees of vivisection. The cramped streets are clogged with people. Wealthy West Enders promenade about the amusements while impoverished East Enders work the stalls and huddle by the chestnut fires for warmth. A painted dragon pursued by knights is chased through the crowds to a chorus of Ho! Oh, the Riding! Mingle with the West Enders, East Enders, or everyone. Hmm. Well, fuck the West Enders, the rich people. Nah, mingle with the East Enders. Lurking in the tents or manning the stalls in the side streets or scowling at the passing gentry, they seem more your level. Boy, a wide-eyed East Ender elbows his comrade somewhere under his jacket. Who's all this, then? A crowd gathers from out of the shadows. You're subjected to a number of looks that, if not quite filthy, are at least grubby. Eventually, the huddle disperses. The first East Ender extends a thin hand, lined and worn. It's a good sign you wanted to talk to us. You spend the afternoon watching vaudeville players satirize the Red Saint and his dragon in an out-of-the-way tent followed by a hearty supper of roast chestnuts and almost palatable ale down by the station. You are tolerated by the impoverished Eastenders. A hue and cry go up in the... go up on the Mornington. A... a wait, what is that? Aberthat Span? Huh? A thief at the Admiral Nelson. The guards will not be kind. 
Hmm. I'd like to get to know the impoverished Eastenders better. This sounds like a... This sounds like a very interesting place to involve myself in. An impoverished group of people that I want to help, and then the Windward Company setting up offices here, who I want to destroy. Ooh. Offer transport to settlers. Explorers, adventurers, and pioneers gather here freshly arrived from Albion, all waiting transport further into the reach. Sure. Transport a settler. Would-be pioneers clamor at the station, eager to make their fortunes among the stars. I simply must move to Titania. From everything I've been given to understand, it's altogether divine. He breaks off the handshake to cough into his sleeve. Forgive me. I'm hoping a new climate will improve my health. Please get me there as fast as possible. I will pay you well if you do. Um... <laughs> I like that I'm just going to take them to Titania, and at no point am I going to tell them. Titania just got mostly destroyed by a pack of feral bees. Um... I'm, I'm not sure about your health improving there, buddy. Sorry. Any other settlers? Nope. So, done, 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 done. Let's explore Port Prosper. Oh, explore Port Prosper. That's the thing that offered me access to the... the fair or whatever it was. Okay, so I think... That's it. It's just Queen's Cross Station. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to do something a little bit risky. This place exports barrels of unseasoned hours. And I have two prospects for them. Need five for the nature reserve and four for the circus. In order to fit enough to satisfy both of those, to fit nine, I had to sell pretty much everything else I had. So, I'm going to make my way to New Winchester with a spare one barrel of fuel and two of supplies. I think it'll be fine. Fuel seems to go down exceptionally slowly. Especially compared to supplies. It is a bit of a long way to New Winchester. But I think it'll be okay. I'm not going to stop for like anything unless it's along the way. I'm definitely not going to stop for a fight. Oh, well this is awkward. Wasted time. Morale is strained and someone has been careless. One of the barrels in your hold wasn't securely fastened. It has split, spilling the precious hours across the floor. Already the hour's insistent melancholy has begun to permeate the engine, and your clocks are becoming erratic. So I can throw a barrel full out. Safest thing is to dispose of them quickly, and don't miss any that spilled out, or order them to collect every little bit. It will expose them to the stray solemn hours unspooling in the hold, but waste not, want not. Oh, I, I bought that specific amount just so I could do these quests. What I can't remember though is whether I have any of these hours stored in my bank. I know if I do, it's not much, but mm. I'm going to order the crew to collect every single hour. The crew assigned to the task emerged from the hold 30 minutes later, with two days stubble and faces worn with solemn lines. The geodes are back in their newly repaired barrel, though, safe and sound. It is not the date that it was. Gain terror. Oh. Sorry, crew. That I'm sure it wasn't pleasant. Back at New Winchester. Repaired the hole. Got more crew. Just coming back here. Made our terror go way down to 27%. So everything's looking pretty good. Got a decent amount of money, about 730. Keeping in mind I spent a lot on the unseasoned hours. I was thinking about what to do next. I want to go around to ports to deliver the unseasoned hours. I want to deliver the the uh, person that just jumped aboard to Titania, where they're going to have a horrible time because they wanted to relocate there to improve their health, better air or something like that, but it's been destroyed by bees. I want to bring the Gourd of Nectar and Bronzewood back to the clock. Uh, 
at Port Prosper. Bunch of things I want to do, but you know what I'm gonna do? Investigate the black box. Do you remember this thing? We haven't touched it for a while. Guess what I can do now? Pick the lock yourself. It's a complex lock, but you've learned a useful secret or two in your time that might help you open it. I needed a savage secret, which I have in spades, and it uses veils, and I have a 90% chance of success. I'm going to take it. I'm scared. Remember, this is the box that when we consulted with an academic, we found that it may be used to prevent the laws of sunlight from the the sun from having any like control over what might be inside and also the box is heavier than it was before we went to the blue kingdom so let's pick it success Whew. <sighs> Amelia's secret after an hour of delicate work the lock yields Inside is a figure clad in woven blue robes. Its face is hidden by a porcelain death mask, but it isn't a corpse. In the mask's eye sockets, brown eyes flick open, blink at you, and frown. Apparently you're not what it expected to see. This is one of the shades of the dead which dwell in the Blue Kingdom and are strictly prohibited from leaving it. They are also forbidden under any circumstances from speaking. Whoa. So... Whitlock stole a spirit of the dead, put it into a box where even the sun couldn't control it. And just hightailed it out. Why? Close the lid and attend other matters. Ask the shade who it is, ask what it's doing in this box. Okay, it's not allowed to speak, right? So I don't think asking it's going to do much. But that's all of these, actually. All of these are to ask it. So. Let's ask the shade what it wants you to do with it. Does it want to be taken to London, as Captain Woodlock intended, or be returned to the Blue Kingdom? You hold out one hand when you name London, and the other for the Blue Kingdom. The spirit hesitates, its own hand poised between yours. Then, lightly and hesitantly, it touches the palm of your left hand, London. You notice a faint discoloration spreading around the shade's neck and shoulders, a model of salty white. Does it remember its name? Hesitantly, the shade takes your hand and, with one cold finger, spells out Jacob on your palm. It gives no second name. In places, the shade's skin is hardening to a glistening white crust like salt. The contagion worsens the more you examine it as if the very act of perceiving it was fueling its spread. Oh. I should stop asking it questions, shouldn't I? Or it might die. Is it the sunlight that's getting to it that's hurting it? Because the box is opened. Oh, okay. Wow. Um. Should I risk ask asking it what's happening to it? I might be able to stop it, help it. That'll be my last question. It's turning into salt before your eyes. Okay, please don't die or something. The spirit holds up its hands to examine them. It turns them around and you realize that th the backs, which face you, are worse affected than the palms. Are you the cause? Is it the act of perceiving the spirit that is responsible for its desiccation? Beseechingly, the shade indicates the box's lid and mimes closing it. The salt contagion now covers most of the shade's substance. Some of its extremities are solid chunks of salt like a sculptor's most delicate work. Any further encroachment will lead to its destruction. Okay, yeah, we are done. Wow, you so you could just kill it if you wanted. God, how could anybody 
do that. That would just leave the mystery unsolved. And, I mean, he'd be a murderer. Close the lid. The spirit does not complain as the stone lid slides back into place. After its time beneath the glorious incandescent regard of the Blue Kingdom's sun, perhaps it is content to spend some time in the dark and the quiet. I am extremely curious, but I think we know what we need to know to uh, feel pretty comfortable delivering it to London. We know it's been basically stolen from the Blue Kingdom. It's not supposed to leave, but it wants to go to London, so it's not like it's a prisoner, right? It sounds like it wanted to leave the Blue Kingdom. So I will take it to London. Okay. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to deliver some supplies to the surrounding ports.